Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell button down below so you don't miss any notifications. This has been a crazy, crazy time, crazy world right now with COVID-19 and social distancing and all that. It's making me a little bit crazy. So when I get crazy, I craft, that's what I do. So this weekend is Easter and I wanted to throw up a video with a paint on canvas. So it'll be an Easter bunny with some 3D paper flowers. And if you're ready, we'll get started. Okay, I bought this book last month, Bold and Beautiful Paper Flowers by Chantelle LaRock. I hope that I pronounced that correctly because she really did a fantastic job with this book. Um, it's beautifully illustrated. It has step-by-step -step instructions from very small flowers to very large flowers. There's templates in the very back. Um, it's really a fantastic book. I highly recommend it, and I found it on Amazon. So today I was gonna make dahlias. So what I did was I took her book and laid it down, the template down on my um, copy machine, made a copy, cut that out, and then transferred it to the cardstock. So it does take quite a few petals on each one. This is the dahlia, and see it tells you where to find the template, how many to do. It really is a very nice book. But you know, that's a whole nother video. So I got all of them cut out, and now it's time to roll the edges and glue. Okay, so once you have all of your templates cut out, the next step is to curl the edges of the paper. So each petal gets curled around, what I used was the end of a paintbrush because it was just the perfect size to make it roll. And then, um, again, the book has fantastic directions, so I kind of just followed that and each template gets glued into the previous one and they get smaller and smaller and smaller till you get to the middle of the flower. So you can kind of see me doing that here. And again, that is a whole nother video, but they make the prettiest flowers. Very time consuming, but it's fun. It's given you the blue and the white paint together has given you the feel of a sky. And it's just important to cover the whole background, the sides as well. I love to paint. I used to have like a paint and sip um, business. We're in a very, very small rural town in Florida. So a lot of small businesses yeah, don't always make it here. 
but it was a ton of fun. this top to bottom and then once this dries we'll work on the bunny. Right now I'm just got just want to make sure you've got good coverage that you don't have any of the canvas peeking through. Go ahead and do your sides top and bottom as well. And you never just want to stop halfway because it gives you like a line here and you don't want that. So you can just smooth side to side. You want to go side to side instead of stopping abruptly because it's going to give you a mark. See the mark here? So what you want to do is start at one side and go all the way over to the other. It's really kind of hard to mess up this part. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry. Okay, now that the canvas is dry, what we're gonna do is draw on a little Easter bunny. Okay, so, and I use a dull pencil just so it won't poke through the thing, but it's light enough where I can paint over it and you can't really see it, that's how I roll. All right, so I'm gonna come from this side, draw the face here. And like I said, you're gonna go over that. So that's my basic face. I'm going to do an ear, one ear, and maybe this ear, it's going to be floppy. Okay, so this is his face, one ear, and the other ear is flopped. So I think I'm happy with that, so then I'm going to take the white, because it's going to be a white bunny. This is on my paper plate and use about a medium gauge brush. And go ahead and paint right where I've drawn. I like to go on the side of the canvas too, so if you're hanging it on the wall and you're walking by it, it doesn't look unfinished. So I'm going to paint that all the way down. You want to get a good amount of paint on it so that you're not seeing the blue bleed through or any of the pencil drawings. So I'm probably going to end up putting two coats on here just to make sure it's nice and white. A lot of this painting is done in stages because it has to dry before we can put eyes on right and the whiskers and everything so I'm gonna finish this and then let it dry again and put on a second coat so that part I will probably do in super speed See how nicely the pencil worked because you're not seeing it at all and it makes it easy for me to paint between the lines.
take a little break and let this dry. Okay, now that the white is dry and I did put a second coat, I cheated. All right, and then I, now I'm gonna take a black. And by the way, I'm using, this is just Apple Barrel from, you can get it from Walmart, Michaels, anywhere. Um, it's washable with water and it is a matte acrylic. Okay. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black here and maybe a little bit of white so it's more of a gray. I'm gonna use this type of a brush. It's more of a thin, because I'm gonna like skip trace around the edges. So I've got a black and a white here. I'm gonna mix it just a little to make a lighter, like a lighter gray. So I don't want it, I don't want such a harsh color going in there. All right, so what I need it for is I'm gonna go around the edges of this. And when I say skip trace, I mean, I'm not just tracing, I'm kind of skipping around because I wanna see where this ear folds over and so I'll just continue to do that around the edges and I just needed to do that first so that I would know where my pink paint is going to go on the inside of the bunny's ear so that's why I'm kind of doing that now like I said it's not a definite line I call it skip trace a real professional might call it something different, but <laughs> that's what I call it. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse that brush out. I'm gonna pick another brush, maybe about this size and do the pinks of his ears. So again, I don't want to do this really bright pink. And this is just, a, this one is gloss. I guess I've mixed some gloss and some matte. But I'm gonna do, I want it to be a lighter pink, so I'm gonna add in the white. I'm gonna wet my brush just a little bit. And then I'm gonna mix the white and the pink until I get a nice, soft pink. Okay. Then I'm just gonna I'm just like making strokes because I don't want it to look, you know, like I just colored the whole thing in. So. Okay, same thing on the other side. Okay, and I'm also going to use this same color pink, maybe just a little bit brighter because I want him to have a big, bright pink nose. So I'm going to come in like this. And just kind of draw a triangle. back to the grays that I had before. And I'm gonna do a little, need a little more white actually. And I just use a paper plate. It's just easier for me. When I'm done, I throw it away. No mess, no fuss. Okay, so once I get a little gray color in there, I'm gonna go back and this towards the bottom and again that skip trace we talked about just around this pink a little bit just kind of gives it some dimension same 
thing on the other ear. What we're going to do is just give him some small, and maybe that's where the black will come in, just some small black eyes at the bottom. So I'm going to use that same brush, loaded good with paint. And I think I'm just going to do this. Try and make them the same size, of course. Alright. I want to come in with my long, thin brush so that I can put some eyelashes. And I'm just using the black on that as well. And I'll probably make the whiskers out of this also. Okay, going in for whiskers. our basic bunny and then I have some fun stuff I've made some 3d paper flowers and I'm gonna put some on the crown of her head and then some others around the edge but that's just basic you could even take on the side here write happy Easter if you wanted to or hoppy Easter but let's move on to the to the flowers I've got the hot glue gun heating up and I've got my paper flowers ready. Those are finished. I'm just going to take this long brush again and I wanted to kind of outline the nose. Skip trace again. So while it's dry, I'm going to give him a little, little eyebrow. like my paintings to be more whimsical than not so I mean the fact that the eyebrows are not the same and the eyes are not perfect it's okay it's your creation so it doesn't have to be perfect if it's appealing to you if it looks good then other people will love it too all right let's see if glue gun is hot enough and of course I had to wait for this part to dry so I'm going to take my little flowers that we made out of paper and I think I'm going to place them on her head so let's see let's start off with this one all right so it's just getting hot enough Start off here, I think, with a little, little leaf and the first flower right in the crown. That's super cute. All right, and then I think I'm, you know, when I was making these, I thought these are going to be too small, but actually, they turned out really perfect and they're kind of big. So, I think I may go in with a smaller one here. And a little rose. 
and this really adds a lot of character to the painting itself because it ends up being 3D. And these paper flowers are really kind of fun to make. Time consuming, but fun. Okay, and I really love these, but they were a little too big to go there, so I think I'm just going to glue them around on the canvas just because they're super cute and I don't want to waste them. So. these little Easter eggs, but I think I like the flowers a lot better. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with the way it turned out. Well, that was fun and fast and simple, and now I have an Easter decoration for my front door. All right, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, and stay safe out there, guys.